Long before the theory of gravity was a glimmer in Newton's imagination, the natural physics of density and buoyancy already perfectly explained why apples fall down. Quite simply, objects fall or rise based on their relative density to the medium surrounding them. Apples fall because they are denser than the air, while helium balloons rise because they are lighter. No gravity necessary. This is why raindrops fall down through the air, and air bubbles rise up through water. Everything seeks its relative density and rises or falls until settling accordingly. This is why a tiny pebble sinks to the bottom of the ocean, but gigantic cruise ships and aircraft carriers stay afloat on the surface, because even though a pebble is so small, its mass relative to its volume, its density, is more than water, so it sinks. And even though a cruise ship is so large, its mass relative to its volume is less than water, so it floats. If Newton's apple had landed in a puddle instead of on his head, he would have seen the apple only fell through the air because it was denser than the air, but then floated on top of the water because it was less dense than water. Have you ever noticed how it's easier to stay afloat with your lungs full of air than it is when they're empty? Submarines float on the surface when their ballast tanks are filled with air. But when the vents are opened and seawater floods in, they begin to sink as the submarine's density becomes greater than water. Depending what depth they wish to dive, sailors simply adjust the ratio of air and water in their tanks, and when ready to resurface, they blow compressed air into the tanks, forcing the seawater out, lowering the density, and thus causing them to rise back to the surface. We can also prove this fact of relative density by filling a balloon with approximately half helium and half air. Since helium is lighter than the oxygen, nitrogen, and other gases that compose the air around us, filling a balloon with just the right amount of helium to compensate for and balance out the density of the plastic results in a gravity-defying, levitating balloon at equilibrium that neither rises nor falls. How is it that gravity is so strong that it can hold all the oceans, buildings, and people stuck to the underside of the ball earth, but so weak that it allows birds, bugs, smoke, and balloons to casually evade its grips completely? How is it that gravity holds our bodies clung to the underside of a ball earth, but yet we can easily raise our legs and arms, walk or jump, and feel no such constant downward pulling force? How is it that gravity can cause planets to revolve elliptical orbits around a single center of attraction? Ellipses by nature require two foci, and the force of gravitation would have to regularly increase and decrease to keep planets in constant orbit and prevent pulling them into direct collision courses. Einstein's theory of relativity and the entire heliocentric model of the universe hinge upon Newton's law of gravitation. Heliocentrists claim that the sun is the most massive object in the heavens, more massive even than the earth, and therefore the earth and other planets by law are caught up in the sun's gravity and forced to orbit perpetual circles and ellipses around it. They claim that gravity also somehow allows people, buildings, the oceans, and all of nature to exist on the underside of their ball earth without falling off. Now, even if gravity did exist, why would it cause both planets to orbit the sun and people to stick to the earth? Gravity should either cause people to float in suspended circular orbits around the earth, or it should cause the earth to be pulled and crashed into the sun. What sort of magic is gravity that it can glue people's feet to the ball earth while causing earth itself to revolve ellipses around the sun? The two effects are very different, yet the same cause is attributed to both. Furthermore, this magnetic-like attraction of massive objects gravity is purported to have can be found nowhere in the natural world. There is no example in nature of a massive sphere or any other shaped object which, by virtue of its mass alone, causes smaller objects to stick to or orbit around it. There is nothing 
on Earth massive enough that it can be shown to cause even a dust bunny to stick to or orbit around it. Try spinning a wet tennis ball or any other spherical object with smaller things placed on its surface, and you will find that everything falls or flies off and nothing sticks to or orbits around it. To claim the existence of a physical law without a single practical evidential example is hearsay, not science. Newton also theorized, and it is now commonly taught, that the Earth's ocean tides are caused by gravitational lunar attraction. If the moon is only 2,160 miles in diameter, and the Earth 8,000 miles, however, using their own math and law, it follows that the Earth is 87 times more massive, and therefore the larger body should attract the smaller to it, and not the other way around. If the Earth's greater gravity is what keeps the moon in orbit, it is impossible for the moon's lesser gravity to supersede the Earth's gravity at Earth's sea level, where its gravitational attraction would even further outtrump the moon's, not to mention the velocity and path of the moon are uniform and should therefore exert a uniform influence on the Earth's tides, when in actuality the Earth's tides vary greatly. Furthermore, if ocean tides are caused by moon's gravitation, how is it that lakes, ponds, and other smaller bodies of standing water remain outside the moon's grasp, while the gigantic oceans are so affected? Heliocentrists claim the ball Earth is perpetually spinning on its axis at a mind-numbing 1,038 miles per hour, or 19 miles per second, and somehow, people, animals, buildings, oceans, and other surface phenomena can stick to the underside of the spinning ball without falling or flying off. Take a ride on the Gravitron at your local amusement park, however, and notice how the faster it spins, the more you are pushed away from the center of spin, not towards it. Even if the centripetal, inward-pulling force, of gravity did exist, which it does not, the centrifugal, outward-pushing force, of the ball Earth's supposed 19 mile per second spin would also exist and have to be overcome, yet neither of these opposing forces have ever been shown to have any existence outside the imaginations of heliocentric scientists. Astronomers claim to have measured all the planet's distances, shapes, orbits, weights, relative positions, and times of revolution all based on the law of gravitation, and without gravity, their entire cosmology folds under its own weight. Without gravity, people cannot stand upside down on a ball Earth. Without gravity, the Earth and planets cannot be revolving around the Sun. Without Newtonian gravitation, Einsteinian relativity, Copernican heliocentricity, and the entire Big Bang ball Earth mythos cannot exist and falls to pieces. Gravity, both metaphorically and quite literally, just does not hold any water, not as a sound theory of cosmology, and not as a law supposedly responsible for holding in the world's oceans. Now, even if gravity did exist, 
why would it cause both planets to orbit the sun, orbit, 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 and people to stick to the Earth? Gravity should either cause people to float in suspended circular orbits around the Earth, or it should cause the Earth to be pulled and crashed into the sun. What sort of magic is gravity that it can glue people's feet to the ball Earth? Sucks.